had recently made a frame for my bathroom mirror, and of course, as soon as I was done, my kid said, I want one too. Here's my daughter's bathroom mirror. And I started asking her some questions about what kind of frame she might like. And as I was asking her these questions, I thought to myself, these are good questions that anybody might find useful when they're attempting to tackle building a frame for their mirror. So I thought I'd put together this video that might help you design and plan your project. In this video, I'm going to focus on answering questions number two and number three. In a previous video, part one, I focused on answering the question of how to fasten it to the wall. So when you come to the part where you need to construct your frame, I think there's two major decisions that need to be made. And the first one depends on whether or not you have little clips that are holding the mirror onto your wall. And the mirror is usually glued onto the wall, but also sometimes it'll have these little clips just to really secure it and make sure it won't fall down. So if you have these clips, you really don't wanna take them off. What you wanna do is come up with a way to work around them. I have four ideas for you. Your choice will mostly depend on the tools that you have available to accomplish this task. The first one is to use a router to create a pocket on the back side of the board that the clip is going to rest inside of. The first thing you're going to need to do is take some measurements and mark out the spot where you need the pocket to be and then grab your router and drop it into that rectangle that you made and start moving it slowly left, right, back and forth until you make a pocket the size that you measured. Another really similar option is if you have access to a Dremel tool, it works pretty much the same way. Just drop it into the rectangle that you marked and, and dig out a pocket for the clip to rest inside of. Dremel tools are quite a bit smaller than routers. They're really meant for detail work. And so it costs about half as much as a router, but it's gonna take you about twice as long to dig out the pocket but if you have a Dremel tool on hand, it will certainly work for this project. Just be mindful that you'll probably have to adjust the depth on the bit that you use and run it through that rectangle a couple of times in order to get the pocket down to the depth that you want. If you don't have a router or a Dremel tool, don't despair. I've got a couple more options that might work for you. This one involves using a drill and a chisel or a flathead screwdriver. In order to make a pocket for the mirror clip, you're going to take a small drill bit, mark it with a piece of tape so that you don't drill down too deep, and you're just going to put a bunch of pilot holes into the rectangular space that you marked for the mirror clip. It should look something like this when you're finished. Then take a much larger drill bit, mark it with a piece of tape again so that you don't drill too deep, and you're basically just going over each of those pilot holes and digging out more of the wood. This is the drill bit that's gonna take out large chunks for you. When you drill out each of the pilot holes, then adjust the angle on your bit and keep getting after it and trying to clean up that rectangular space. It's not going to look gorgeous and that's okay because it'll be on the back side of your piece of wood and nobody will ever see it. You're the only one that'll know that it's there. Grab a chisel and a hammer or a flathead screwdriver works just as well and just keep trying to clean up that pocket that you're trying to make. It's not pretty, but it is certainly effective. My last idea for dealing with those mirror clips 
is not making a pocket for them at all, but replacing the mirror clip completely with something flatter. You can do this by using a washer instead. The washer is still going to secure the mirror to the wall to ensure that it won't fall down, but they're not quite as deep as the mirror clips, and so your board can lay a little flatter against the wall. Or you could purchase another type of mirror clip that would allow your board to lay flatter against the mirror. Just be prepared that with this method, your frame will never sit perfectly flush against the mirror. There will be a little bit of a gap. All right, so those are four options you can use to deal with mirror clips. I hope you found at least one of them useful and that you could apply it in your situation. The next thing I wanna talk about is when you're building your frame, how to join the boards together at the corners. And again, the method that you choose is mostly gonna depend on the tools that you have available to complete the task. I've put together a few options for you as far as what your corners might look like. The first one is the easiest to do. 90 degree cuts can be done for you at most of the hardware stores where you might go shopping for your boards. So if you don't have a miter saw and you don't have a miter box, this might be the option for you. If you do have a miter saw or a miter box, then your cuts could get a little fancier and you could try 45 degree corners. Another option is using decorative square pieces to put in the corners, and this would require 90 degree cuts again, so any hardware store could cut your boards to size for you. The decorative pieces range from kind of basic to more detailed looks, and they get more expensive as they go, but you have a wide variety of choices if this is the style that you want to go with. Once you decide what you want your corners to look like, then you have to somehow join the pieces of wood together. And I've got four options for you to consider. It's gonna depend on the tools that you have available, but also each of these four options get a little bit of a stronger joint. So consider the first option is kind of the weakest and it gets stronger and stronger as I go through them. The first one makes use of a staple gun. And staple guns by themselves are not incredibly strong joint holders, but if you add some glue to it to support it, it should work just fine for you. Another option that's a little bit stronger is to use some joint fasteners. These come in a variety of styles, but basically you're just stretching it across both pieces of wood and nailing it into the corners. Another option that's a little bit stronger still is to use a Craig jig. Pop two holes into the board and then use two Craig jig screws to fasten the two boards together. A fourth option involves using a router and a biscuit bit. Basically, you just make a small cut into both boards and then you fit these little biscuits inside of them along with some wood glue and this gives you a very strong joint. There are lots of ways to join boards together. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but hopefully it'll give you some ideas to get you started. I'm gonna finish this video up by quickly talking about some design ideas for your mirror frame. When you're thinking about the materials that you're going to use, consider the size of them. If you have a smaller mirror, you might wanna use smaller boards, maybe one by threes. If you have a larger mirror, it might be able to take some bigger boards and it wouldn't be too overwhelming. So maybe some one by fours or some one by sixes might work better. Another thing to consider is that if you have to glue or use command strips to adhere the frame directly to your mirror, then you might want to consider using some thinner boards. So like instead of a one inch board, see if you can find 
some half inch thick boards so that the weight of the frame isn't too much. Next up is to consider the style of your corners, which I kind of already talked about earlier in the video when I brought up 90 degree versus 45 degree corners and then the square corners with the decorative pieces. So we'll just move right along to some decorative edging or molding ideas that you can add to your frame. If you have a router, there are several varieties of bits that can add a decorative edge for you. And if you don't have a router, then no worries, because your local hardware store should have a selection of molding or quarter round that you could just glue onto the inside or outside edges of your frame and give it a little decorative pop. And finally, no project would be complete without the finishing touch of paints and stains. If you choose to use a stain, consider applying a sealant on it. Just because bathrooms are wet spaces and you don't want your stain to get messed up by any water damage. And if you decide to use a paint, it's recommended that in bathrooms you use a high gloss or a semi-gloss finish to protect your project. That's it for this video. I hope you found some useful information and I hope you had success when you try it out on your project. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel.